Hi, I'm gonna read the story, The Chris Miss Guest. Not Christmas. I wonder if we're going to miss something by Rich Melheim. It was only four days till Christmas and Fern J. McMouse had been so busy with work and family concerns that she had not taken any time to ready her home for the holiday. I'll do my preparing when vacation starts tomorrow, she said to herself. If everyone would just leave me alone, I will have plenty of time to go get it all done. But the next morning, the little mouse awoke and was horrified to discover a letter on her doorstep which read, get your house in order, prepare at once. I am coming to visit you this Christmas and you will, and we will have the grandest celebration in the world that has ever seen your Christmas guest. <gasps> Blessed heavens, thought Fern to herself. However, will I be ready for a guest? The place is a mess, the kitchen needs painting, and there's not a Christmas cookie in the house. So off the little mouse ran. She hung a do not disturb sign on her door and quickly launched into the task of getting her home in proper order. But oh, the interruptions. No sooner had she finished the floors and started the baking when knock, knock. Some Snoopy neighbors stopped in to collect money for the poor in a distant land which Fern couldn't even pronounce. Go away, said Fern, chucking a cupcake at the pesky varmin. Can't you see I'm busy preparing for Christmas? And she turned and returned to her baking as the saddened neighbor left. But no sooner had this one disappeared down the snowy lane then a group of minstrel mice was heard singing outside her window. Merry Christmas, Fernfield Mouse, they shouted cheerily. May we come in and carol for you? No time for that, she replied. I have simply too much to do to waste my time singing. Now off with you. And the little field mouse turned back to her work. But again, the interruptions. There were pests and vermin and shirt tail relatives who had nothing better to do than sit around yapping about the weather. There were garbage collectors and bill collectors, a dozen so-called friends with presents who hadn't the decency to leave their gift and get out. All of them came knocking on her door at the worst possible moments, and all of them were told in no uncertain terms that Fern hadn't had any time for any of them because she had an important visitor on the way. On and on this went, Ipshire interruption after time gulping interruption. Through every waking hour of the day, it was truly frustrating for the little mouse and needless to say, most distracting. How will I ever be able to celebrate with my guest? By the time I shoo away one unwelcome pest out the back door, another arrives in the front. <sighs> Later that afternoon, Fern was pulling a batch of smoky cookies from the oven when the door swung open and yet another head popped in. Heavens, can you read the sign? How many times do I have to? started the field mouse before catching herself. I've come to wish you a little Christmas cheer and read a bit of the old story, smiled Parson Possum, poking his head in the door. If you have the time, I'm sorry, sir, um, but I do not have the time, answered Fern in the frostiest of voices. As you can see, I'm busy preparing for the most holy night right now. I have a very special visitor coming at any moment and everything must be just right or I won't be ready. She thanked the good reverend for his thoughtfulness and tossed him a blackened cookie before slamming the door on him. Do not do that to Pastor Dan or Pastor Kathy. Mm -hmm. or Pastor wow. Kathy. What if we did? Slivers of sunlight in a frozen sky were all that remained of the day as the little field mouse finally began to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, if I can only get the wash done and the rest of these decorations out, I'll be ready, she sighed to herself. 
I am ever glad this is almost over. Fern tossed the last glob of tinsel and was dipping the bottom of the laundry when, knock, 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 a gentle rapping was heard near the back door. She gritted her teeth and stomped to the entry. Ugh, can't these miserable vermin read? You think they would at least show a little Christian compassion on the most holy night and let me get on without disturbance. Fern threw open the top of the door with an angry snarl and peered out into the shadows. Seeing no one, she slammed it shut and turned back. Again, there was a knocking, this time a little louder and a little less timid than before. Knock, 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 knock. Fern could barely keep from exploding. Arg! I've no time for such foolish pranks, she shouted with an icy glare as her voice, and she flung the door open to the night. But again, no one. And then, just as she grabbed the latch to slam it against the cold once more, Fern happened to glance down. And there, just a little bit lower than her glasses would allow her to see without bowing her head, Fern was startled to find a little grub of a mouseling. He stood smiling in the knee-deep blanket of snow, holding a bent tin cup. Please, mum, the little waif began, if you please, for to help a small hungry vermin of my mouse without a home on this most gracious of all nights. If a coin or a cake or a warm place to sleep on this hallowed eve would be too much to ask, perhaps a small morsel or crumbling could be spared for to put a little Christmas cheer in me hungry soul. The little pest batted his beady black eyes and smiled. Christmas isn't Christmas on an empty stomach, you know, and no! and slammed the door and shook her fist. No, 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 no. It is just you rodent waifs to take advantage of this most holiest of seasons for your own gain. I have a very important Christmas guest on the way for a true celebration. And now, just when I'm almost ready, you have the nerve to bother me with your selfish and inconsiderate begging. Well, I won't have it. Do you hear me? Fern snarled. I have given all I can and taken all I can take. Yik. She opened the door crack to scowl at the beggar once more, but the mouseling was not to be seen. Even his tracks had disappeared in the thickening snow. Good riddance, muttered Fern to herself as she turned and returned to her last few details. And a Merry Christmas to you. The snow was peaking like a brilliant orange sliver over the eastern horizon and the candles were burning low on the hearth when the little field mouse collapsed and breathed an exhausted sigh of relief. Finally, after the planning and the slaving and the baking and the buying and the trimming everything from the tree to her savings account, Fern was ready. She retired to bed and set the alarm for three hours of sleep so that she would be fresh and ready to celebrate the new day with her honored guest. At last, I'm finally prepared, thought Fern to herself as she drifted off to a dreamless sleep. But the new day came and went without so much of a silent shadow darkening Fern's perfectly dusted doorstep. And the next day did the same, and the next, and the next. On through the 12 days of Christmas, the sun rose and set without a solitary soul rapping on her freshly polished door knocker. The crackling fire and a clock on the mantel were the only company Fern kept that holiday. And the only voice heard was the lonely word of a mean old owl in the tree by the window who kept asking, ooh, ooh. At last, all things were ready. At last, Fern was properly prepared, but her guest didn't appear. At least she didn't think he did. And Christmas dawned 
and Christmas melted away another year. The end. What do you think? Did she miss the guest? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm It says a Bible verse. And Jesus said, Whatsoever you do to the least of these, my mouselings, you have done unto me. Matthew 25, verse 40. Goodbye. Happy Advent. Happy Advent. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your leaves are so unchanging. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and we're about to go decorate our Christmas tree. And I love decorating the Christmas tree. Christmas trees are so awesome. I love, love, love Christmas trees. And I've always loved Christmas trees, even when I was a teeny tiny little baby. In fact, when I was so little that I couldn't even roll over yet, my mom and dad, they put up the Christmas tree, and my mom, she put me on the floor on a little blanket in the middle of the living room, and the Christmas tree was in there, and I was looking up at the Christmas tree. And uh, my mom went into the kitchen to go warm up my bottle, and when she came back, I was gone. And she thought that I had, like, been Douglas napped or something like that. She thought I was gone forever, and she was, she was so scared, and she's running around the house trying to find me, but then she heard a little tiny baby Douglas giggle. And I had rolled over for the first time. I had rolled over and then rolled over again and again and again several times. And I rolled under the Christmas tree. And I was underneath the tree and I was looking up at the tree from underneath and I could see the lights. And apparently I really liked it because my mom said that I was laughing a lot when I was down there. But, you know, I've been looking into a lot of these traditions that we have, these Christmas traditions. And it turns out that a lot of them are not in the Bible. And, you know, I think that's okay. I think it's okay for us to have these other traditions like Christmas trees and Christmas lights and giving presents and things like that, stuff that isn't in the Bible, so long as it all points us back to what is really important. If you ever start thinking that Christmas is about Christmas trees, that's not good. Christmas is about how God sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. All the Christmas traditions that we have are all well and good, but if they pull us away from what's most important, that is not good. But a Christmas tree absolutely reminds me of what's important. Because see, there's actually some cool symbolism behind a Christmas tree. Because see, when we make a Christmas tree, we make it out of an evergreen tree. We make it out of a tree that is green all the time, even in the winter. So you know how in fall everything is all pretty because it's all getting red and orange and, and yellow and all the leaves are falling? Well, essentially, all those pretty leaves is just those trees giving up for the winter. Times get hard and those trees are like, well, I'll be back in the spring when it gets warm. See you later, guys. And they're pretty much dead all through the winter when the weather's nasty. But evergreen trees are green all the time, not just in the summer, but even in the winter when things are cold and nasty. And we use an evergreen tree for Christmas trees because just like an evergreen tree is constant and unchanging even when times are tough, so is God's love and his promise to you and to me and to everybody. Just like an evergreen tree is green all the time, even when times are tough, God loves you and me and all of us all the time, even when times are tough. And he's never going to go back on his promises. You know, the Bible is absolutely full of God keeping his promises to his people. But it's also full of God's people not trusting that God's going to come through for them. But on Christmas, we celebrate the fact that God kept his promise. And he sent his son, Jesus, to be our savior. God's love for us is eternal and unchanging. You know, the other thing that the Christmas tree reminds me of is it doesn't take a break. You know, in the Bible, it says that when the angels came down and they talked to the shepherds and they told them that baby Jesus was born, they said that this good news was for all the people. And they didn't just mean all the people in that season. You know, they didn't just mean all the people in Bethlehem or even the world at that time. They meant all the people, everywhere, ever. This gift of Jesus Christ is an eternal gift, a gift for all the people. And all we have to do is accept that gift. God keeps his promises, and his love is never failing. So I hope that this Christmas season, as you are putting up your Christmas tree, or if you see a beautiful tree with awesome lights and decorations and things like that, I hope that those trees will remind you of God's unfailing love. And I hope that when you and I see a Christmas tree this year, that it will bid us all place faithfully our trust in God unchangingly. Merry Christmas, guys.